Hello, America. I'm Mark Levin, and this is Life, Liberty, and Levin Sunday. I'm very glad you're here. This is a killer show. I can feel it. I know it. We've got great guests, Peter Schweizer, an exclusive interview. He's got massive information about communist China and how they're buying off Republicans and Democrats. First time there is no better journalist who uncovers really seedy muck in our government and by certain populations than Peter Schweitzer. And it's always an honor to have Peter on the program as an exclusive guest when he has a new book coming out. He doesn't just put out books. He, his books, his team does an enormous amount of research. They back it up with facts and footnotes. And it's always jaw-dropping. In his new book, Blood Money, Why the Powerful Turn a Blind Eye While China Kills Americans, is stunning. It's stunning in the breadth to which communist China owns our government. It's stunning in the extent to which it affects our society. It is stunning by the fact that we have a president of the United States and a family, as Peter has reported before, that basically has taken tens of millions of dollars from this government, which I think is... One of the reasons why they don't stand up to communist China. Peter Schweitzer, welcome. I want to jump right into your book. We're not going to be able to cover the whole thing. But if folks, if you get any book, this is the book you need to get, and the sooner the better. It comes out on Tuesday. Let's start with China's foot soldiers. China's foot soldiers in America. What do you mean by that? Yeah, I mean, you look at a situation like the fentanyl crisis. Uh, it's killing 100,000 Americans a year. Um, and a lot of people know that the precursors come from China. What they don't know is that China is involved in every single chain in this link that leads to the death of Americans. The precursors come to a port, the port of Manzanillo in Mexico. It's run by a Chinese company. They send those precursors up to a small border town in Mexico where 2,000 Chinese nationals help them turn it into fentanyl. They take pill presses that are imported from China, that are sold to the drug cartels at cost by the Chinese. They make these pills. They then bring them across the border into the United States. Now, the Mexican cartels need a way to communicate securely, Mark. They use Chinese apps and Chinese communication devices because they know the Chinese will not share that information with American law enforcement. And finally, when these drug cartels collect all this money, they used to launder, back in the old days with cocaine, they used to launder those profits in Latin American banks. Today, they launder them in Chinese banks. So the fentanyl crisis is completely one that is delivered from China. And the problem is our political leaders, uh, people like Joe Biden, people like Gavin Newsom, people like Adam Schiff, have ties, they have entanglements to some of the networks that are involved in this process, money laundering, et cetera. If you just look at Joe Biden, for example, Mark, the, the Chinese gangster that set up the Sinaloa cartel uh, with fentanyl, made them the kings of fentanyl, is a guy named Zhang An Lo. He goes by the name White Wolf. White Wolf has a business partner. That business partner gave the Biden family $5 million. So does Joe Biden really want to have a conversation about Chinese involvement in the fentanyl crisis? He does not, and his policies show it. You mentioned Adam Schiff. You mentioned Newsom. Tell us a bit about the, their links. Yeah, I mean, Gavin Newsom is the same way. He does not want to talk about China's involvement in the fentanyl crisis, even though the, the amount of fentanyl deaths in California has gone up more than a thousand percent since 2016. He took a trip to China, had nothing to say uh, about this, said it's not about finger pointing with China, despite their involvement in all of this. The problem that Gavin Newsom has is going back to his days as the mayor of San Francisco, uh, he has been neck deep in relationships with Chinese organized crime networks that are involved in the drug trade. Uh, he appointed a gentleman in charge of economic development for Chinatown in San Francisco who ended up being a dragon head, a leader of a Chinese organized crime syndicate involved in the drug trade. He had a gentleman on his transition team as mayor who ended up being involved uh, with these same organized crime networks. When he set up an entity called China SF, uh, this was designed to bring Chinese investment dollars to the Bay Area. 
He picked a gentleman in China who happened to have a, a known history and connection to Chinese organized crime. So Gavin Newsom, I would argue, is personally compromised. He does not want to have a conversation about Chinese organized crime networks working in the United States in the drug trade. If you look at Adam Schiff, you see a very similar pattern. Uh, there's a, a business that was operating out of his district called Allied Wallet. Executives from that company sent more than $100,000 to his campaign and to his PACs. Uh, this company, uh, when he, they sent the money to Adam Schiff, was already under FBI investigation. Schiff took it anyway. And lo and behold, that company is involved, became involved in money laundering with Chinese organized crime. Adam Schiff, as chairman of the Intelligence Committee, did nothing on fentanyl. If you look at his congressional webpage, he has nothing to say about China's involvement, uh, even though in his district, fentanyl deaths from 2016 to now have gone up more than 1,200 percent. He's been completely silent. Blood money. Why the powerful turn a blind eye while China kills Americans by Peter Schweitzer. And Peter, uh, it's sort of bipartisan, isn't it? There are also Republican politicians, too. Who might they be? Well, Mitch McConnell, uh, the Republican leader in the Senate, is a prime example of this. Uh, fentanyl, of course, is a huge problem uh, in, in Kentucky, in his state. Uh, and he proclaims that he supports uh, the Biden administration in imposing economic sanctions on Chinese businessmen or Chinese officials that are caught being involved in the fentanyl trade. Look, the bottom line is the Chinese don't care. They laugh at this. Uh, the Trump administration actually put sanctions on a businessman named Juan. Uh, this gentleman was sanctioned by our government for his involvement in the fentanyl trade. In March of 2021, he gave a blazing speech where he said he was proud of his involvement in the drug trade. He was proud in how it helps China in its competition with the United States. And he was given an award by the CCP. Um, Mitch McConnell thinks this is the way you deal with this problem, and it's not going to happen. And this is, I think, because his family has long, extensive commercial ties going back for a long time with mainland China. He does not want to disrupt that flow of money to his family. And you broke that on this show a couple of years ago, and the Republicans still vote for him to be their majority leader or their leader. It's just stunning to me. There's so much more in this book, folks. When we come back, Peter, I want to get to this issue destabilizing our country, destabilizing a democracy. The book is called Blood Money. It comes out Tuesday, but you can order it right now on Amazon.com. It'll be available in any major bookstore. The timing is right. This is crucially important. They're trying to create Russia collusion again with Trump, which is laughable. Well, we have communist China collusion all around the Democrat Party, some Republicans too. We'll be right back.